Well, good morning. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. So I finished painting the hat. Now, right away, I don't know what I wear this with. A lot of times I just get inspired and do some painting and go from there. Okay, so here we go. And then again, remember this hat is not a hat that I block this is just one of those uh, Amazon hats that you get off Amazon it's just one of those so once I started to create and make my own hat I definitely I definitely can tell the difference in a a man-made hat then a custom-made hat i was able to tell like right away like i said this is a you know it's a nice hat but after making the ones that i really truly like there is a big difference and remember i was telling y'all this hat is not authentic felt they make some felt like fiber put it over the top but they used a styrofoam hat mold so that's why if you notice this one got a really good shape so they take a styrofoam hat mold and put it right over the top. And this was the original color green. They put it right over the top and sew it around. And that's why if you notice this hat got very stiffness, but it is not an authentic uh, felt hat. It's beautiful. But you know, since I've been getting into the hat journey, I um I've noticed that. So but I just wanted to do this to kind of show you guys that you could take a regular felt hat or uh, whatever uh, felt clone hat and you can um, you can make your own hat. You can make your own hat, customize it, color it. And remember I used acrylic paint. So a lot of times, like I was telling y'all, I enjoy to create things. It's like a, you know, like, like people behind the scene, they have a lot of stuff that they like to do. So me, I like to create stuff. So if I get bored, I will grab something and like, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do that. So y'all know what I did the other seven hats. Let me see. Am I blurry? Sometimes these phones. But normally the phone to tell you. I think that got a little bit clear. Don't y'all think so? So we're going to have some coffee. Guys. I want to sip some tea. We're going to have a conversation, okay? And I have to be very mindful of how I speak on here. Because, you know, a lot of stuff you're not. You got you to gotta watch your language. So, again, we're going to go into the topic of mental health. Yesterday, I watched a movie on Netflix, a documentary, and it says on the, the name of the documentary is Big Pharmacists Make Healthy People Sick Every Day. Okay, Big Pharmacists Make Healthy People Sick Every Day. All right, that's the name of the documentary that I watched on Netflix. And I'm not here to give nobody mental health advice. I'm not, I'm not here doing that. I'm sharing my mental health journey. And for somebody that might be, you know, going through something with mental health, have these same questions and concerns like myself, or you have a family member that's going through mental health and you have questions and concerns, Please watch this documentary. It's so much informative information that the pharmacists and these doctors are not telling us. Okay? Everybody know in medicine, the money is in those prescriptions. The money is in the treatment. The money is in the prescriptions. So you will get a lot of people that they're not really listening to the patient. 
They go to these board meetings. They got their friends. They sit down and they friend. Oh, oh, girl, hey, you got some 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 um patients? Yes, because you got the the psychologist and the psychiatrist. So when you're going to do your talk therapy, he don't have the power to write a prescription. So they trying to encourage you to go to the to the uh to their buddy and get the pills written up for you, or they encourage you to go to your medical doctor. So in this documentary, you take healthy people, right, that is over in a war and they're going through trauma based off of what they experience, what they see, PTSD. And they said the military, and this other lady wanted in the military, they send you right to the doctor. Go see the doctor. Say you just be in the military and the, the signs hanging up and you just go in there and you see the doctor and say the doctor uh folks she could even say her name she said oh i'm going through something he said oh everything will be fine yeah no problem you're experiencing something okay not a problem at all oh i do it people go through this all the time and he went here you go take this you'll be fine i this happens every day you'll be fine so the the high-ranking sergeant she walks out she take this and she's trusting that she's doing the right thing but i'm saying this to say that she was feeling weird about it she didn't feel that it was it was right it was good for her it you know it made it made her feel different you know just different things like that so just her going and doing that, so you take a high-ranking sergeant, very smart, intelligent, and I'm just doing a little brief story. I'm not going to go into everything. Y'all go watch the movie. Then you take another man that's very smart in the military, high-ranking, and um, he go through something. They put him on the medicine and all this type of stuff. You take another lady. You know what I mean? She's not having the mental health problem. She just got this off-the-wall off sleep pattern, right? She don't sleep normal. So when she went to her doctor... She said, oh, Doc, I come here. I can't sleep. And the doctor told her, he said, just lay down and go to sleep. He told her, he said, I don't write prescription for sleeping pills for healthy people. I don't do that. And that was her medical doctor. Very good doctor. He told her he don't do that. He ain't write no uh, medication for sleep and stutter. You know, somebody said, take some over-the-counter stuff. They, You know, she going and she's trying to, you know, she probably got insomnia because she worked at a... a cafeteria and you know be wee wee hours of the night so her sleep pattern is out but they immediately here come these doctors and writing these prescriptions and it ruined these people lives or well, you took very smart intelligent healthy people that had thriving lives ahead of them and then to get on this medication that they're not telling us is addicting that uh is is worse the thoughts that it give you is insane and but they telling you to take 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 the pill and you'll be okay. So that movie you really have to watch it for yourself. So now I'm going into my own experience, but y'all gotta watch that. So the therapist meeting me one time, like I said, it took me three months to get this appointment. He never pulled my file or anything. So anytime you go, and this with anybody. And you're talking to somebody. I could take a person that don't even supposed to have mental illness. And I can make you have an experience that can make you cry in front of me. And then, oh, yeah, 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 she, she, she's depressed. So I watch the people do it in the manifestation world. So say, for instance, we talking. So I'm talking to you and I say, you know what? Tell me about the happiest day of your life where you had the most incredible time, the happiest day of your life, and you would light up. Oh, that's when, you know, I gave birth or I got married or this, that, and that. You know, you get excited. Then I could ask you a question. Tell me about the most hurtful pain or thing you have been through in your life. Tell me about that day. And, this, and you see how I took you from happy and right then, your brain going to go to the most traumatic experience in your life and your your thoughts gonna go from happy bloop, to you going to that day and you could take a normal person that don't post to have these problems but you see how it triggered your brain
from a happy to the bad experience and instantly you'll go you'll show happy and then you can go into a sad and then you know what i mean your emotions can switch because somebody took you back to that day and it's almost like you reliving that day so you could take the most healthiest person so people go through that and what i realized and i you know i went back and saw this guy for the last time and i told him i said you know what I said, I hear you still before, before I'm leaving off. This man is determined to get me to pop a pill. You need, you, you, you need some medicine. You need some medicine. And I said, okay, so if I go take medicine, am I going to be okay? I mean, I mean, is it going to make it better? I'm still going to have that same problem. I'm not denying to you that I'm going through a lot mentally, but this man never pulled my foul. He about no, you know what I mean? He about no bits and pieces because, you know. But he never allowed me. I don't want to talk about that. We'll talk about that later. Like I told, if you take somebody that have been through the trauma that I've been through, they're going to experience those. So, you know, when you go and you be talking, and all of a sudden you have these crying spells, they feel like you really messed up. So, that's what be happening to me. I can be in a good moment. Y'all probably see me experience that before while I'll be in a good moment and y'all can see me talking and all of a sudden y'all will see my emotions go into a whole nother space. Okay. And I told him, I said, have you ever thought that maybe instead of medicine, I need to go to a grievance group? Yes, my son's been deceased now for eight years my mother's been deceased now for seven years and a lot of people say oh that's normal you you know i mean you should have been over that that's not something that somebody can get over right away so i will forever i will be affected by that there's not a pill. There's not nothing. And and I'm going to go through those moments where I could be into the, the greatest smile in my life, the greatest happiness in my life, too. I could think of that moment and I can go to the darkest time in my life. But if you're a doctor, what he needed to do is behind the scenes, see how I'm coping. Is she uh, taking care of herself? Is she, you know, if she work, if she's going to work, if she's making doctor's appointment, is she, so if you think that I'm so messed up, get to know me. You go talk to my MD and say, I'm concerned about a patient and this, that, and that. And, you know, I just want to know, you know, how is she doing when you talk to her? Is she, you know, um, you know, taking care of herself? Is she doing this? And, you know, just, you know, you, you ask. So... He don't even know because he didn't get the time to talk to me that, yes, I'm not an introvert where I go out and hang out and party and all this stuff anymore that I enjoy being alone. If y'all see when I'm alone, I do these videos, I make these hats, I cook, I be creative, but he don't even know that side of me. You know why? Because he don't allow me to talk about that. He controls the situation and all he want to do is keep me in the darkest moment so I could be over there in the corner in that chair crying so he can get me convinced to pop a pill. Okay, he don't allow me. Wait, 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 Gino. Gino, don't worry. I ain't popping that pill. Okay, don't worry. You here? You gonna take care of me? Yeah, we gonna take care of each other. Mom and I go pop that pill. He can take. It. Okay, so he don't even allow me to express none of that. You know why? Cause he don't care about his patients. He's there for a paycheck. He's in the pharmaceutical game. He get kickbacks for the people he refer over there. He getting a nice bonus on his check. So his goal is to get many people in that line and do what they need, do what they need to do. Another thing that they're not telling us, this medicine that they're giving us in mental health, when they do these case studies, they're designed for short-term use. So some of these pills, when they do the study, is designed for six months and then you wing your way off. And when they were showing the 12-month study, it was showing that the people that was on that stuff long-term crashed worse. 
and then those side effects and the things that you think, the stuff that I was experiencing and thinking, and I don't want to get too deep on here and get my channel in trouble, so I need y'all to watch the movie. And again, I'm not giving nobody mental health advice. You follow in your heart or what your doctor regimen is. If you're on medicine, you take your medicine. I am not at all suggesting none of that. I'm trying to raise awareness of mental mental health, these pharmaceutical companies. And if somebody like me that's experiencing and you feel in your gut and you know that medicine is not for you, then this is a video for you. But I'm not suggesting anything. Anybody that's been on medication, you can't just stop like that. It don't work like that. You have to wing your way off. So I'm not giving none of those advice. Let's be clear. I'm not giving nobody advice to not take medicine, not do this. This is a conversation about mental health, my own experience. And 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 for somebody that's probably at the point they, they don't feel that medicine is for them, then this video will help you because it'll give you all the behind the scenes things that go on with these pharmaceutical companies where they're not telling us where you will learn so much, okay? You're not alone on this journey when you feel that way, so... Please be advised of that. I'm not giving no advice on nobody. I'm sharing my real life experience and journey with mental health, okay? So I think that if you, re if you really get involved with the patient, you can see if they're going downhill spiral or if they in a, a, a place where they okay. So what I realize is what I'm going through, this will be a part of my life, but I, I learn a way to deal with it. I'm, I'm not as bad as I was. So I said, he never let me talk about that. I'm not as bad as I was because I had a good therapy where she understood I'm not a medicine person and we did talk therapy and she was helping me with the grief because a lot of times what parents or anybody that lose a child, the first thing they feel like, why wasn't I there? Why wasn't I there? And then for you to have a young child that's 24 and they wind up departing from this world. Why did God take my baby and he's younger than me and I'm older? So you have guilt, you have grief, you have all these different things going on. But it take an amazing therapy like the one I had. She retired or she moved to another practice after she got pregnant during COVID. She was letting me know like, why do you put yourself in that guilt trip? That ain't, don't put yourself in that space. You know what I mean? It wasn't meant for you to be there, okay? And don't take his painful journey, because a lot of times we be reliving these episodes, like if we went through that, and what good is that doing for our deceased, deceased loved one? It's not doing no good. It's making us sicker. So for anybody, I say don't go in that last moment, what they was feeling. If you notice, even in court, you see a lot of uh, uh, they, the victim impact statement. And the first thing the person saying, I wonder how my daughter felt when this was happening to, her. I wonder how my baby felt them last moments. And you see how traumatizing that is. We living in the last moments. So I would say, don't go in them last moments and be like, one thing that, uh, that the medical examiner said to me, and I was kind of like lost when he said that, is that a cat out there? There's some snowing, but I hear some crying. So what the medical examiner said to me, so because they kept trying to talk to me. Y'all, hold on. It's like somebody's screaming. Shut up, Gina. Them kids playing is snowing outside. I can somebody, yeah, oh, oh, oh. maybe the kids out there playing in the snow, get ready for the bus. But I lost my train of thought. Uh, what was I talking about? Um, oh, the medical examiner. So, because the funeral home kept telling me, oh, yeah, we could do an open casting, we could do an open casting. So, I was afraid of. When, when they said my son was shot and he had two shots to the head and one of the bullets was like here. And then the first thing I'm like, I don't want to have an open cast to get my baby face is destroyed. And see, funeral homes, 
they get more money for open casting than cremation. So they definitely want to coach you in that. And I remember going to a funeral a long time ago and the mom never really talked to the funeral. The husband and her sister them handle everything. So she didn't really know the condition of her baby. She just disconnected. She had a total meltdown. So the day of the funeral, mind you, she never seen her baby. She never let nobody talk to us. So finally, the day of the funeral, we at the funeral home. And the funeral is going on, but she's still outside in a funeral car. And she probably was out there for 30 minutes. And the pastor said, y'all got to get her and bring her in. We can't hold this no longer because he got a certain time to be at the cemetery. We got to get this funeral going. So finally, they convinced, they got out of the car. This was the most horrifying funeral I ever went to. And this is why I was so wondering if my son could have an open funeral in the medical examiner questions I was asking. So she walking down the aisle in the church and they bringing her down, they bringing her down, they bringing her down, they bringing her down. And she finally gets to the casket and she look and that lady said, what? Screaming to the top of her lungs. And she said, oh my God, Jesus. She's screaming. Everybody in this funeral, in this church is crying. She said, why did y'all do this to me? My baby look like a monster. Why did y'all do this to me? Why, why, why? She was traumatized. Her baby had got shot with another girl down here in Minnesota where the baby daddy got jealous. Him and his brother went over there with 12 gay shotguns and stood behind the car. And unloaded. And as they doing that, they took half his face off. It's missing. It's missing. It's missing. But to get this open cast instead of saying we can't do this, they put sunglasses on him. But his face was gone. Oh, Jesus. That was the most horrifying funeral I'd ever went to. So now I'm in her shoes. And I'm terrified. Because I keep, they saying my baby shot in the head. Two shots to the head. One. You know, so I guess when they when they shot my baby, one there and one here were probably from this way. And it went out through his jaw. Okay. So I said to the medical examiner, I said, I want to know, because the funeral home going to just tell me whatever. Do you think my son can have an open casting? He said, first off, I want to say one thing to you, because I know you grieve. And he said, I want to say this, and I hope it brings you some peace. He said, your son didn't suffer. The first shot um, took, he, 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 and I'm trying to be careful with what I say for YouTube, because some things you can't say, but he was saying he didn't suffer. The first shot kind of, he went home with that one. He didn't feel any pain. And he said, your question, yes, I have seen funeral home do remarkable work. Your son can have an open. He said they got all type of clays and uh, uh, stuff that they can do. And he said, yes, he can have a open um, casting. So I was like, okay. Because I know these funeral homes, they want money. So, but anyway, he told me that he didn't suffer. So he's like, I hope that brings you some comfort. And I didn't understand it then, but then it did. Because remember how I told you I was living in my son's last moments? I definitely he was terrified. Definitely he known that this was probably going to be the last day that he was alive. Because they just killed his father in front of him. And he's next. And his brother in the other room, he's next. So he definitely knowing that this is it. So, but I had to just get at peace with that. And not be worrying about those moments and I had to celebrate D'Angelo in life not in death but these doctors give you pills and you could take a highly intelligent person and they turning us into zombies so when I was telling the man I said when I was on that medicine I was a zombie I was a zombie I didn't have no thought process, no nothing. Oh, that's not true. Yes, it is. Why don't you take it? The medicine you offering to me, why don't you pop it? So please watch that movie and you will learn something about 
the world and how <laughs> everything is about the money at the end of the day. It's not about the patient. A lot of times patient care go out of the window. window. This is about the money. So please watch this movie and learn some behind the scenes. And if you feel in some of them signs and symptoms, go back, advocate for yourself because at the end of the day, with a lot of this stuff that's going on, these doctors that's writing these prescriptions and putting us on medicine that's taking over our mind, controlling our thoughts, they don't be held liable for the unthinkable. We do. So we have to uh, advocate for ourselves. So please watch that movie. We'll learn so much. Also watch Painkillers, but this one specifically uh, relates to mental health. How big pharmaceuticals is making healthy people sick every day. That's the documentary. It's on Netflix. Please watch it if you was ever having any concerns or questions about mental health for yourself or family members. I'm not encouraging nobody to stop taking any medicine or nothing like that. It's just watch and learn some things that might can be helpful for you. Any Another thing is like the questions that they ask. This doctor kept asking me and they want you to fill out this stuff. He was like, do you have any firearms and stuff like that? So, he they always ask that. I don't know. Is that the new thing now? So, some told me to put on that paper. Don't answer. Or just say no. So, the, the one lady back in the movie was, you know, she was a high-ranking sergeant. And, you know, she was trained to do combat. Do you know that they messed her file up so bad? And and this is a military a, a, mili, a military vet. It's on her record. She can't own a firearm. She can't be by a firearm. So she married him. Her husband got firearm. He don't even supposed to be in like you know like them convicting felons. You don't supposed to be around weapons and stuff like that. That's what they do to you when you go to writing and saying a lot of this stuff and they feel this and that. <laughs> They will get a warrant because they know what you got. The government know what you got. They will get a warrant. And you go in there and say something to that therapist or just anything, how he feel. And he'll write it up, write an affidavit, send it to the judge. Judge, this woman right here, I'm concerned about her. She is a a, a legal uh, person that's, that owns firearms. And I feel that she could be a threat to public safety or, or we need these these to be taken away and without a shadow of a doubt you come and they knock and, and if you don't comply you're going to jail the, 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 the sheriffs or wherever they send at your door and they got a, a, a search warrant to seize your firearms because they got this stuff in your file so um i'm like oh no so like with all that stuff i take very seriously and um like i said i'm i um definitely mindful with what i say i don't play with firearms because firearms could be very dangerous but i do think that as a protection you know people do need to be able to have protection if they need it and not you know i ain't the type of person that want to do like walk around and conceal and carry but i do feel like you know you do need something to protect yourself especially when you're a law-abiding citizen and you don't have felonies of record you have a right to own one but we got to watch what we say because as well as we got a right to own one, we could say the wrong thing and lose that right to own one. So with that, this is the head I made. Uh, you guys definitely check out that movie and I wish everybody the best. Uh, but I know that I'm still healing. But like I said to the therapist, I don't need medicine. I'm grieving still. I need to go to a grievance group and talk with other parents and mothers and, you know, people that's experiencing what I'm experiencing. A pill not going to help me because I'm going to wake up tomorrow and still be grieving. Okay, the only thing the pill is going to do is numb me where I probably can't remember all the details, you know, because it's frying my brain. But with that being said, you guys have an awesome day. And please watch that movie. And this is the hat that I made. And thanks for watching my video story time and i really appreciate you guys being here because this is definitely a positive outlet because a lot of times a lot of this stuff i don't really talk to my friends about a lot of this especially if they're not 
in that realm of mental health. You know, they don't know what to say to me. I have a conversation like this. So, yeah, but with you guys, have a great day. Toodles. Okay, here's a screenshot in case if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But definitely watch this. You will learn a lot of good things. Have a great day.